Alright, hey guys, and welcome back, as this week I'm taking a look at a forgotten line of die-cast cars, Tootsie Toys. Tootsie Toys is one of the oldest toy manufacturers in America, based out of Chicago, Illinois, and dates back to 1890. The company was founded by the Dallas Brothers and mainly focused on making small die-cast figures and vehicles. They also made metal prizes for Cracker Jack boxes, which the designs for would be used as the first die-cast tokens in Monopoly games in the 1930s. The cars were exceptionally popular from the 1930s through the 1950s, being marketed as quality toys everyone can afford, and sold well, especially during the Great Depression. Besides from their regular line of small die-cast cars, they also made 5 to 11 inch cars and play sets from the 1960s and 70s, mainly to compete with companies like Tonka. They again changed their design to keep pace with the times in the 1980s, as their cars were now smaller, lighter, and had chrome painted wheels with a bearing instead of just a metal rod, to compete with companies like Matchbox and Hot Wheels, as their basic line had lost much of its appeal. Tootsie Toy is still in business today, and even though they don't produce die-cast cars anymore, they are still quite popular with collectors. Alright, so now let's take a look at the Tootsie Toy collection that I have here, and I have quite a few different uh, pieces spanning quite a few different uh, generations from some different uh, die-cast pieces like I showed before that were uh, in earlier versions of Monopoly games to different cars from the 60s, 70s, and even more modern stuff through the 80s. So first let's take a look at these uh, little Tootsie Toy Monopoly pieces. Now one thing you'll notice on these uh, is that they, they don't have a Tootsie Toy marking anywhere on them. So while there's no actual documentation that uh, Tootsie Toy made these, the license was given to the Douse Brothers, um, you know, by the by the Monopoly and Parker Brothers uh, company to produce these, mainly because they were probably the most popular and cheapest uh, company to source out um, the little die-cast figurines. And the interesting thing is that these were originally in Cracker Jack boxes. The only difference is, is that they were painted. Like you'd see that little dog and uh, like the iron and stuff like that. Dif different little charms like that. You would see like a little red, red dog and like the iron would be yellow. So that's where the history of your Monopoly pieces come from. There's not really any uh, crazy backstory like a lot of people think. You know, it's just they were just random things that, uh, you know, Tootsie Toy made and produced for uh, Cracker Jack, so there, there's no big crazy history behind the Monopoly pieces like a lot of people think. They just happen to be random objects and uh, they just seem to go well with the game. So that's a little interesting bit of history behind that, I think, which is neat. And uh, these are really nice. These are kind of uh, plated in like a low, a low grade quality silver plating uh, for the Monopoly game, so that makes them a little bit nicer than ones that you would see today, and the iron actually has quite a substantial little bit of weight to it. Let's get just a little bit closer look there at them again. And you can tell they're, they're much, much different than ones that you see today, because ones today have like a real matte finish, they just look very cheap. And these definitely have a much higher quality finish. So let's put those off to the side, now let's take a look at some of the uh, cars that we have. And we'll start with this one here. Now I remember I had one very similar to this when I was growing up, not this exact one, or at least not this one, I had the same car, but not this exact particular one. And uh, this is kind of like an old Model T or like a Model A, like a street racing roadster. And I mean, this is probably one of the more common uh, Tootsie Toys you see all the time. I, I would be willing to bet a lot of people had these. And uh, even though these are primarily from the uh, late 40s, uh, 50s, 60s, and 70s. Um, I still had quite a few of these growing up, even though you would think that it would be way too early in my generation. They were still sold uh, widely at like convenience stores and little five and dimes. Uh, they would come in like a like a five or an eight or a ten pack. So they were they were very very cheap, and they were just like little quick you know gifts of like you know maybe a relative was visiting your house or you know you did good on your report card. And you know they were just a little a little cheap thing, you know that didn't cost very much, and were still uh, still really fun. I remember having a lot of fun playing with these, and I think this is a really neat looking uh, car. 
It has like kind of a gas tank in the back, like a barrel. I always imagined that was like a root beer barrel <laughs> in the back of the car for some reason. And it's just a really, really fun design. And I really like that a lot. Now most of them will have the uh, Tootsie Toy branding, which I don't, you're probably not gonna be able to see because of the light here, but they'll be stamped uh, Tootsie Toy, Chicago, Illinois. And some of them will be hard to see because the paint is over top of them, but 90% of them will have that stamp. Now there's nothing complicated about the cars at all. It's just a simple metal rod and two little plastic wheels on each side. And uh, that's, that's basically it. So the one thing that I think is really neat about Tootsie Toy cars is that they predate everything. They, they predate Matchbox, they predate Hot Wheels. So these are kind of like your original Hot Wheels and I really don't think that they get enough credit. Now this one's one of my favorites here. This kind of reminds me of like, uh, when you see like older science fiction films and things like that, it almost looks like this was kind of a model based on the Batmobile or maybe like James Bond. I think this is a really, really neat looking car. And I especially like the, uh, the purple color, but that crazy singular fin in the back. You have the, uh, like the one driver's seat there. And just the whole design of it, very, very sleek, very original, very neat. So that's a really cool looking car, very imaginative. And then we have here kind of like a uh, like a rally car or like an old time uh, race car. And a lot of these, the paint's really heavily worn, but I think that that gives them a lot of character. And you can tell these were really, really played with heavily. And they were just designed to last. You, you rarely find Tootsie Toy cars that don't roll or, you know, or, or shattered or broken. They, they, they really are very, very durable cars. I like what's left of the green paint. I think that looks neat. You got the number 18 on the front there. And just a really cool little uh, sporty, sporty race car, sporty buggy there. Very fun. And then here we have another uh, little two-door coupe and uh, just uh, this paint has survived a lot better nice uh, nice dark green and uh, just a little regular coupe sedan that you would probably would have seen in the late 50s or 60s it's nothing too special but it's a nice little everyday car and now this is very much like the first one that I showed how they had these old-timey roadsters and this looks like an old like Model T or some type of model old Ford truck that's been converted into a little racer. And that's really neat. I think these are really fun. You got the back of the flatbed truck there. Just a really cool little design, really neat. And then of course we got a little punch buggy here, a little Volkswagen uh, Beetle. But this would actually be the sedan version before they'd be uh, more shortened. So this is uh, one of the more original designs here made by Volkswagen. And barely any paint left on this at all, but still nice. I think there, there's something nice about just seeing that even when in just the, uh, you know, the, the silver steel finish. It's just, it's like, it's like it's a part of history. Like, like you, you think about these cars and most of these cars are between 50, you know, plus years old. So that's, that's unbelievable. And they still roll um, pretty well. Like they, like they're not going to roll as well as like Matchbox, you know, Hot Wheels, Johnny Lightning, you know, cars like that. But for just being as basic as plastic wheels on a metal axle, you know, they're pretty good. And you can see why these would have been so successful at a time like the Great Depression. There's, you know, they, you could buy these back then for like 10 cents. They were they were sold, you know, like nothing. So, you know, if, if, you, if you were on tough times and needed a present for someone, you know, and you could buy a whole bunch of these little cars and they cost practically nothing. Now this one's one of my favorites, mainly because the paint survived in such spectacular condition. Uh, this would have been probably late 60s, 65 to 68, this uh, model here. And uh, you got a nice twin cam engine in the back. Got some cool detailing on the spoilers, the front grille, very sleek design. And let me see if we can see what this says. I can't read what that says, but sometimes they would have put the models and the types of cars uh, stamped underneath. But really nice, that red paint job really survived well over the years. So this car got lucky. 
And then we have kind of like a old Buick or like maybe an old Cadillac sedan. And this is probably early 70s. This is probably like uh, 71, 72, no later than like 68 or 69, just because it has some of the fins on the back there, which you don't see very much. And uh, this one had a pretty busted up wheel. But a lot of times if you just take some sandpaper and sand them down, because the plastic will get warped, they'll still roll and it doesn't really roll that great with that one crooked wheel, but uh, it still goes. So still a nice looking little car, even for all the wear that it has, but that wear just means it's been really played with and enjoyed. Now we have another nice one here, but this one's interesting because when they stamped it out, they didn't stamp out that uh, part of the window. So it almost looks like he's been in an accident. This is another one where the paint really survived, really nice. And uh, this is definitely uh, from the early 70s, probably about 74 or so, I would guess. And that's probably another good indicator as to why the uh, as to why the uh, paint has survived so well. And it even has a little hitch. So this probably had like a little trailer or something, maybe a little boat or something that was pulling along that came with it as well. So another great looking little car here. And another very similar car here. This is just another basic, uh, basic sedan. But again, looks really good. Again, this would have probably been from the 70s just because looking at the design of it, possibly the extreme, extreme late 60s, but more than likely, this would have been from like 73 to 75. And uh, the paint has survived reasonably well. So not too bad. And just a nice little normal looking average car. Now this one, I don't know if someone repainted this, because this has kind of a more fluorescent design to it, and I don't know if that's showing up well on camera. This is an old pickup truck here, and you can definitely tell the, with, the, with the tires. Yeah, somebody definitely went and repainted this, which I think is kind of neat. It's definitely not its original color, but it's, it's fun. It's somebody really took the liberty with it and uh, you know made it their own. And it kind of reminds me of an El Camino, sort of, uh, but it's just like an old, this is an old uh, mid-60s pickup truck and really, really neat. That paint job's really fun and wacky. And then here we got an old uh, old tow truck. Now this one's probably a bit older. This one's probably uh, late 50s, early 60s, this model here. And you can tell that because it's a much more uh, heavier die cast. Like you can look at this one and you can tell this is much thinner and this, this probably weighs a good couple of ounces more. So that, that's how you can generally date um, Tootsie Toys, not just by the make and model of the car, but also by the type and the weight of the metal that's used. And it uh, has a nice original paint job here. has a nice little hitch in the back. And uh, that's a fantastic looking tow truck. And that is absolutely iconic of the uh, mid-1950s. And it looks fantastic. What a great little uh, tow truck. Looks Looks great. And then here, this is a, uh, another hauler. Now this, I believe, it would have had a uh, flatbed and you could put cars on it. So this would have been a uh, car carrier. And this would have also been, uh, hard to say, definitely sometime in the 50s, uh, between like 55 to 58. So this is bordering on the early 60s. This is, again, very heavy, thick die cast metal. And the paint jobs really survive well here. It's just a shame I don't have the rest of the uh, rest of the cab of this vehicle here, but still looks really nice and uh, survived really well. And now this is also really fun. Um, this again would be probably early 60s. We have a uh, petrol uh, truck here. This would be like, a, like a, a truck that would deliver oil to your house. And I remember growing up, we got oil del delivered to our house uh, by, a, by a truck. They'd come and hook it up and uh, fill up your boiler and stuff like that. So, or this may have been one that serviced the gas station, I'm not sure, but this is definitely a, uh, a uh, gas truck here. And this is probably 1962-ish, I would have to put it around there just because of the design. And the paint overall, not fantastic, but has survived uh, fairly well, so very cool. 
And then last but certainly not least of my originals uh, here in the basic line anyway, we have a little uh, fire truck and this thing has really, really been beaten up. Uh, this is probably late 60s to early 70s. You rarely see any of these with the ladders. I so wish it had the ladder. That would really make that look complete. Uh, the paint is almost completely worn off except for the top and a little bit on the side there. But the ladder would have spun all the way around. And uh, yeah, that, how, how cool is that? that? That's a really fun little vehicle. Just a shame that the paint and the rest of it didn't survive in as good a condition. So now let's take a look at some of the other cars that I have here. Now these are some of the uh, more later period ones. And these are the larger Tootsie Toys that they made later on. And these were mainly to compete with a lot of uh, larger uh, toy cars and die-cast cars, especially Tonka at that time period was starting to get big. And so they decided they wanted to make larger, um, you know, bigger, heavier uh, cars, because that just seemed to be popular at the time. You know, not just the giant Tonka trucks, but Tonka also made stuff in like a mid-size range like this as well. And this is really fun. You have the stinging bug, and you got a uh, picture of a Volkswagen Beetle with the uh, super oversized tires in the back and some exhaust pipes coming out the back there. Again, on the other side, you can kind of see the uh, interior, although not really on the inside. You got the bumper there and the sunroof. And then on the other side here, I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Yeah, just says Volkswagen with the date. And you can tell how it's, it's much different now. You know, you got much bigger, hard plastic wheels. Still same basic uh, design with the axle and uh, no bearing, you know, just fused right onto the wheels. But really nice, like the purple color, very creative, very cool. And then we have this little cool truck here. This is one of my favorites. And this is from uh, 1969, just a regular pickup truck. But check out that cool sticker with that funky uh, paint job on it. And you're starting to see the chrome wheels, which is neat. And it has a little hitch here, so I don't know if it would have came with something or you could tow other trucks and stuff like that. Uh, but really cool, just a cool looking design. And uh, really neat, I love that sticker. That's, that's just so, uh, so distinctive of the time period that this was made and really makes it funky and cool. Very cool. And the last one out of this larger series, this one definitely has some special value uh, to me because this is my actual little truck. Uh, this is the only Tootsie toy that I have that survived from me growing up. And I believe this is called a, uh, let's see, this is called a deuce and quarter truck or half truck. So it's a military vehicle. And I believe I actually had the whole set. There was like a little, uh, little military Jeep and a cannon. Um, that you could pull around and some other vehicles and this little guy survived and man oh man do I remember like playing with this like crazy and uh, I, I love that love that star the big green star on the front and the paint survived uh, pretty well I mean as well as it can but you see that's kind of the, the the thing with these like like you look at something like this or like this and the paint you know is all all beaten up and worn away but, you know, you, you take something like this to where this is from the, uh, the early 80s to the very late 70s. And, you know, I grew up in the 80s. And this is just from the 80s. And look, look at how much paint wear this still has. So this is, this is just normal play wear. And, you know, these things were designed and built to last. And, I mean, this is proof of it. You know, I, I played with this growing up. And here it is. It's still, still going strong and still a fun little... Uh, little army truck. I had, I had many fun hours playing with this and many other little metal toys and cars and trucks made by Tootsie Toy. And then last but not least, this is the uh, probably the most unusual out of all of them. And this is when Tootsie Toy uh, was changing their look in the uh, 1980s. Now I don't know exactly why. It seems like they were trying to compete more with Matchbox and uh, you know, like like Hot Wheels and stuff like that. But uh, I believe there actually is a little bearing inside of the wheel now, which you can't see, but that's, you know, uh, Hot Wheels has that on, on, on all theirs. And you didn't really see on too many of them before to where they didn't have those chrome wheels as much. 
This is a lot smaller, so it kind of reminds me of, uh, well, a, Micro Machines wouldn't have been around at this time yet, depending on when this was made. But you can tell that they, they were just trying to modernize the look of that. When you look at it, like, say, even something as nice looking at, as that, you can tell they were really just trying to make these more pocket sized, you know, so that way growing up, you know, you carried a lot of your cars in your pocket, very, very small, very easy to collect. And it really just looked, looks like they were going away from their old style. I mean, the wheels are completely different. They're thicker, they're not thinner, you know, they roll better and everything like that. So uh, you don't see these very much at all, but they're definitely interesting as to how Tootsie Toy was still trying to keep itself relevant. All right, so now let's pause here for just a second and then we'll set up a little ramp and you can see some of these guys and see how they uh, see how they still go. All right, so we got the little ramp set up. So let's send a few, uh, a few cars down. We'll start off with the little uh, purple superhero car. There we go. Send our little red racer down. Not too bad. Our little custom painted truck. There we go. Let's send our little mini coupe down. There we are. And the blue guy. And a little racer. Now, a big reason why these aren't going as fast is because if I had a little bit of a taller ramp, they would definitely be going a lot further. So it's no fault of the, uh, the vehicles, but just with just with uh, room requirements here. Yeah, see, there you go. You can really see him going. His, his, uh, his bearings and axles are definitely in better shape. But overall, I think that they still... For the most part, I mean, considering that they're, they're, they're so simply made, they honestly still run really well. I mean, you know, for cars that are, number one, going on over 50 years old, and number two, for uh, just being so beat up, I, I think they still work really well. Oops, this guy's a little stuck. There he goes. Wheel got caught up there. And we got our tow truck. There we are. Oh, there we go. He's got some good wheels on him. I don't know if this fire truck will go at all. This will be interesting to see. Oh, there we go. I know he is in a good shape. And now let's send our uh, larger ones down. Move this a little to the side. There we go, not bad. Oh, smashed right into him. And last but not least. Oh, that's crazy. Why did he turn off to the side? <laughs> that's weird. Maybe the axle might be a little bit bent. That's very strange. Well, all right, guys, that's going to do it for my review of Tootsie Toys. I hope you enjoyed taking a look at the uh, the history of this uh, very obscure and definitely forgotten about uh, toy company. I know to a lot of people they seem like a relic of the of the past, and most people probably can't connect with these uh, little die cast toy cars, and they definitely just look like something that you know their time has passed. And for a large part of that, that's definitely true. But I think that the history of these toys is definitely worth noting because without these cars. And without Tootsie Toy, you wouldn't have had any Matchbox, you wouldn't have had Hot Wheels. Um, these are the forefathers to, you know, so many die-cast uh, toys today, as well as Tootsie Toy being one of the oldest toy manufacturers just in the United States itself, plus with the history that it lends to, uh, you know, classic board games like Monopoly and where those iconic pieces came from. So again, guys, hope you enjoyed taking a look at the history behind the Tootsie Toy line, and I'll see you guys back here next time. Take care. Hey guys, if you liked the video that you just watched, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below, and you can follow me at Facebook at Kinga Retro or Twitter at hashtag 8 Brian. See you next time.